These are all working at 700 nanometers, so they're all the same scale. So if you put your hand out, you'll feel here, you're five, okay? So there's five of them there. What I'd like you to do is just, just, just feel them and, and get a feel for what the shape is so you can understand it, right. okay? And then start to make decisions about which ones you like more or less. And then if you put them in a row for me and say, maybe the closest one is your preferred one, right. and then you put them further away, the ones you like less. And you'll see some of them are more kind of more bumpy, some of them are small, smoother. Sure. Yeah? Okay, that's fine. Take your time. Always a thanks, mate. My research focuses around nanotechnology and particularly around developing new materials and new devices that are structured on the scale of a few tens or hundreds of atoms for the next generation of computing technologies. We were very keen in producing the work that it wasn't just a demonstration, it wasn't just this is what things look like on the nanometer scale, but there was some, something more fundamental to it, some, some more conceptual basis to it than that. So David is very good at bringing in a sense of place so using the fact that the Olympic Park used to be an industrial site, so therefore using copper, which is one of the metals that was, that was worked on in the, on that site, as the basis for, for the work. Bringing in also local communities, so he had a local group of blind people who came in and helped him to develop some of the ideas. And then interpreting our research in the light of that context was fascinating. The wavelength of light, so visible light, is between 400 and 700 nanometers. Okay, so beyond, when you're smaller than 400 nanometers, you can't see it because no, it's smaller It's smaller than the wavelength of light. No one can see it. No, and it doesn't matter if you've got any optical microscope, no matter how good it is, it won't be able to see it because oh. it's smaller than light. Mm. What they did is they developed a number of microscopes all around the mid-1980s. One of them was an electron beam microscope and the other was an atomic force microscope and that's the one we've been working with. And what it does is it's a bit like an old record player with a stylus and it, it touches the material and it uses a laser beam to measure the vibrations and then it actually makes a picture but it uses touch to make the picture oh. okay so what we're saying is at that scale scientists need to use touch to see and perceive at that scale we took mirror polished copper and scanned it um, a number of scans that were taken randomly across the surface at different sizes, the wavelength of red, yellow and blue light. And they've been done randomly. We've got here five of each, which are 3D printed. And then the group today will be deciding which ones they prefer through tactile aesthetic judgment, not visual aesthetic judgment. And then that will be the rule or the sort of like the decision on what the physical form of the public sculpture will be. And then once it's made, it will be made with copper again, so that there'll be a, a sort of a, I guess, a circuit, a sort of a return loop of touching and experience and the, the fingerprints and people sort of engaging with that. And over time, I expect that the, the work will start off super shiny and it'll get more and more and more corroded and the fingerprints of the public on it will, will become evident. That's, is that your worst one? Yeah, yeah, I didn't like that one. Didn't like that one, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that one's number four. Good, good, good. Yeah. I'm really surprised that uh, this was a really, really, uh, smooth and polished piece and then you know when you scale it scale it scale it and then it becomes like this amazing you know often public art is sort of either high up on a pedestal so you can't touch it it's just purely visual or it might be graphic or often there's even signs saying please do not touch which is you know incredibly uh sort of limiting for people who have sight loss. So we're saying we're flipping it around and we're saying actually this work is about touch. It's being developed by people who don't have vision or very limited vision. So they're both informing the work and it's also being developed for people to engage with through touch. The best researchers, in my mind, are those that are very creative. Maybe they have a different, another creative outlet as well as doing scientific research. And research in itself is a creative process and that's not always actually properly understood by people. And I think going through the process of working with a visual artist really brings that to the fore. So I find the whole, whole process very stimulating.